I have a lot of LEDs lying around, and I feel like I should put them to good use, preferably on something more interesting than a lamp. Anyways, one of the more interesting projects involving LEDs is an LED matrix. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to design and make one from scratch. Let's get started. First things first though, let's explore why we would need a matrix and why we couldn't just use a microcontroller's pins. First, let's consider an 8x8 matrix, which has a total of 64 pins. That's a lot of pins considering this Atmega 8A only has 23 outputs. Now that we explained why we would need a matrix in the first place, let's explain how we would make a matrix. So, a matrix works by putting the LEDs into rows and columns. We are then able to select both a row and a column to select a specific LED. Because we're only selecting the rows and columns, this reduces the pin count further from 64 down to 16, with 8 pins being dedicated to the rows and 8 pins being dedicated to the columns. While this is a great plan so far, I want to reduce the pin count even further because I plan to use this ATtiny85 instead of the Mega I was speaking of earlier. It only has 6 outputs, and to solve this pin shortage, we can use a shift register. In fact, we'll use two of them. In this way, I only need to use three pins to control all 64 LEDs. By linking the two of them together, I can get to 16 outputs with just three outputs on the microcontroller. In addition, I connected the outputs of the second shift register to this ULQ2003A IC. This IC is a Darlington transistor array. The reason why I need this Darlington transistor array is because I will be syncing the current from each column at the same time. The shift registers by themselves are not capable of syncing the entire current for each column on only one pin. So anyways, let's get to building. Since there are so many LEDs, I recommend that you take it slow and test each row and column. I recommend you follow my advice or else you'll end up like me and have to debug several shorts that you missed the first time around. But finally, after all the debugging, the project is complete and it is time to write the code for the microcontroller. Basically how the code works is that each column will be lit up one at a time. And this process will be repeated so quickly that you can't even tell. Here I will show you the difference between the sped up version, which is what I'm seeing normally, and the slowed down version, which is what is actually happening. Because of this technique, we are able to save some power because not all the LEDs are on at the same time. And as usual, the code and the schematic will be linked in the description. So anyways, let me show you some of my favorite images that I've made using this matrix. Overall, I'd say that this project was a very good use of my LEDs, and I think that you should try it too. If you're interested in seeing more of my videos, please subscribe, and have a good one.